Today, I'm going to show you how to create this table design from scratch. I'll go over the entire HTML structure and how I applied all of the styling with CSS. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a dribble design I created about a year ago. I'm using this design as inspiration for the table that we are going to create. This table contains information about different movies. At the top of the table, I have a header area, and then beneath that I have rows of data. I have a title section, a date section, genre, ratings, and reviews. In this video tutorial, I'm just going to focus on the design and the layout for the table, and I'm not going to include these checkboxes. But if you're interested in seeing a video with this component and its functionality, leave me a comment down below. So using this table as inspiration, I'm going to jump inside of CodePen so we can actually start this project. So at the top of the HTML, I have a head tag with a link to the font I'm going to use for this project. And then beneath that, I have body tags, which are empty. In the CSS, I declared variables for all of the colors and added some basic styling, like setting the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding to zero, and then some basic body styling. So to get started with this, I'm going to jump inside of the body tags of the HTML. So to begin, I'm going to add a table to the page. So I'm going to write that element. And then within that table, first, I'm going to include a T head tag, which represents the table header. So for that first row, I'm going to write TR, which represents table row. And then according to the design, we have five columns. So I'm going to create five table headers. So for that tag, I'm going to include a TH tag and then multiply it by five. And then include the name for each column. So I'm going to have a title section, a date, a genre, a rating, and a review section. So this will represent the actual header for the table. And then beneath that, I'm going to create a table body. So here I'm going to write T body. And for that table body, I'm going to break it down by each row. And then I'm going to include five data points because there are five columns of data that we have to account for. So I'm just going to place content within this table row so we can actually see something on the page. So now we can actually see this table information in the document. And I'm just going to add a few more table rows to the page so that way we have more content. So again, for that table, the first element we have is that table header, which contains the title for each column. And then beneath that, each row contains data for each particular movie. So now that we actually have content in the page, I can jump inside of the CSS to start applying styling. So within the body, first I'm going to set the display of this to grid. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have an entire crash course video that goes over all of the basics. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. And then to place this in the center of the screen, I'm going to justify the content and align the items in the center. I'm also going to set the color of the text to this gray color that I already defined. And I want the font size to be a little bit smaller for this project. So I'm going to set the font size to 0.9 REM. And then I'm also going to specify the background color to a variable that I already declared. Next, I'm going to work on the styling for the actual table. So I'm going to reference that element within the CSS. And first I'm going to set the border collapse to collapse, which will remove any extra spacing or border between each element in the table. Next, I'm going to add a pretty intense shadow. So if we go back to the design, we can see that I added quite a harsh shadow in the design. So I'm going to add that here by setting the X and Y position to a particular value and also setting a blur and a spread. And I'm also going to set the background color of the table set to white. So that way it stands out a bit more. And universally, I want all of the text to be aligned to the left. So I'm going to add text align left. Next, I'm going to apply styling for each of the table headers. Now I'm going to nest the table header underneath the actual table tag within the CSS. 
and it's because I added SCSS as a preprocessor here. If you're using vanilla CSS, you can just reference each table header outside of the table element. But for each table header, I have a specific styling here. I want the table to be capitalized, I want the background to be a specific color, and I want the font size to be a little smaller. So within the CSS, first I'm going to add a background color to the table headers. And then I'm going to add some padding of 0.75 REM and then 2 REM, which will add some breathing room to the page. And then to make everything uppercase, I'm going to set the text transform to uppercase. I'm going to add some letter spacing, which will also add some breathing room. And I want this font size to be a little smaller, so I'm going to set it to 0.7 REM. And then I'm also going to increase the weight of it to 900, so that way it's a little bit heavier. So this is looking pretty good, and now we have to modify the actual body styling of the table. So beneath this, I'm going to write TD, which represents each data entry within the table. And going back to the design, we can see that there's a bit of space around each element, which really helps its legibility. So going back into the CSS, I'm just going to increase the padding. So I'm going to make it one REM by two REM, which adds a lot of breathing room to the page. Great, so this is looking really good so far. So the last thing I'm going to do is add alternating colors for the rows. So I'm going to write TR, which references the table row, and then I'm going to reference the nth child. So for the nth child, you could identify a particular number. So you can say the first child, the second child, and so on. You can also write math equations here as well. But I actually wanted to alternate, so I'm going to write even here. So for each even row, I want to modify the background color. So here I'm going to set the background color to an other color that I already specified. So now we can see that the second and the fourth row of data have a different color. So just to review what I did, first in the body tags I included a table element, and then within that table element I included a table header, which contains all the headers for the document. And then underneath that, I included a table body. And for the table body, I included several rows. And so for each movie, it includes several data points. It includes a title, a date, a genre, reviews, and ratings. And then I duplicated that multiple times to include other pieces of information for the table. In the CSS, I added some basic styling, like the color and the font size. And then I specified the table and added a border collapse set to collapse. So if I just remove that for a second, you'll see that there's some extra lines between each element. So I wanted the table to be completely smooth, so that's why I set that property. And then I added specific styling for the table header. And for each data point, I included quite a bit of padding to increase the legibility of the table. And finally, I used the nth child to alternate the color for the rows. So there you go, that's how I created this table design using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.